Hello there, geographers, and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Now, so far with Unit 3, we've been talking about cultural landscapes, cultural patterns, and actually just culture in general. Today, we're going to be expanding our conversation. We're going to be looking at different types of diffusion with Unit 3, Topic 4. Now, diffusion is the spread of cultural elements, cultural traits, groups of people, items, goods and services, ideas, or phenomenons from one place to another place. And whenever we talk about diffusion, we have to talk about the hearth. The hearth is the starting point. It's the origin of whatever cultural trait or item we're talking about. When talking about diffusion, we can actually see there's two different main types. We have expansion diffusion and relocation diffusion. Relocation diffusion happens when we see people physically move. They take with them that culture, those traits. And what happens is through that movement, we don't see any new people adapting or taking on the cultural traits. The hearth actually starts to die off. The reason why our hearth is dying off is because the people that were located in the hearth that were practicing that cultural trait have relocated to a new geographic area. We're not seeing the expansion where more people are actually taking on that cultural trait. It's just physically moving from one location to another. And that's the big difference between expansion diffusion and relocation. With expansion diffusion, we see that that hearth actually remains strong. And that's because the amount of people that are practicing that cultural trait, belief, or using the item or good are actually increasing. The numbers are going up. We're not just seeing the diffusion of people moving. It's actually spreading throughout the community. And more people take on that trait. And that's the big difference between expansion diffusion and relocation. Now that we've covered expansion diffusion and relocation diffusion, we're going to go into a couple other types of diffusion. All of these different types fall under expansion diffusion. We're going to talk about hierarchical, contagious, and also stimulus diffusion. Hierarchical diffusion is often going through systems of power. There's a structure system that the diffusion is going through. Oftentimes it's going to be a top-down approach. Everyone is not going to be able to get access to what's being diffused right away. It's going to go through this system. For example, fashion oftentimes diffuses through global cities around the world to other major urban areas, then slowly diffuses from those urban areas to the surrounding communities and so forth. Or we could look at how social media influencers diffuse new ideas or products. For example, games like Among Us, Fortnite, or Fall Guys became popular after major social media influencers started streaming it. Their audience saw how much fun the game was, started playing the game, and then they showed their friends. And they started playing the game. And eventually we have these games go viral and it diffuses throughout society. But notice it's through a system of structure. It's limited at first and expands over time. When looking to see if hierarchical diffusion is happening, make sure to focus on how the traits spread. If it only went to certain individuals within society and then spread from there, more often than not, it's going to be hierarchical diffusion. On the other hand, if while you were looking at how the traits spread and you notice that it actually spread to everyone within a society, that there wasn't really any barriers preventing the diffusion from occurring, then it's probably going to be contagious diffusion. Contagious diffusion is when our trait does go throughout the entire community. There's very little resistance to stop the diffusion from occurring. Everyone has access to it. Oftentimes here, you're gonna think of like a viral video online, or think about a time that you've been in a room with a bunch of different people, and someone in the back of the room is actually peeling an orange. Within a matter of minutes, all of a sudden, everyone in the room can smell the citrus from the orange. Contagious diffusion is happening. The smell of that orange spreads throughout the whole room. Same thing happens when someone makes a cup of coffee. Before you know it, everyone in that room is going to be smelling that cup of coffee. This is contagious diffusion. There's little to no barriers preventing the trait from spreading, and everyone has access to it. The last type of expansion diffusion we can look at is stimulus diffusion. And this one's a little bit more challenging for students. It's different than the others. What's happening here is as diffusion is occurring, the trait is actually changing. Now, it's not the whole concept that's shifting. What's happening is the underlying characteristics, those main themes, the concept, the idea is staying the same. But as diffusion occurs, we're seeing that cultures of other areas are impacting that original trait. They're actually fusing with it and we're seeing modifications. A great example of this is actually McDonald's. Where you go to McDonald's around the world, you'll have different experiences. The concept of McDonald's is the same, but some countries actually have McDonald's menus without any meat. 
There's no burgers on there. It depends on the culture, the religions that are practiced in that country. McDonald's changes both the store layout, the aesthetics of the store, and their menu based on the unique cultures and where it resides. Even in the United States, depending on what state you're in, McDonald's will have different menu items. They will adapt and change based on the local environment. This is a great example of stimulus diffusion. So we can see that diffusion's happening all the time, and it's happening in a bunch of different ways. Now, sometimes diffusion is hindered through barriers. Some of those barriers are cultural barriers. Languages don't always understand each other, so we have language barriers that could prevent people from being able to interact. Or certain religions and cultures actually have a built-up cultural resistance to certain traits and will reject things from society. We could also look at political barriers, as governments actually will hinder the migration of people or try to keep out certain items. They also sometimes even just hinder in general that cultural interactions between different people through censorship or blocking social media. We could also even look at economics. Some cultures just can't afford certain items, so they're less likely to diffuse within that community. And physical barriers as well. Mountains, rivers, oceans, all of this hinders diffusion. Now, I do want to highlight that today, physical barriers barriers are no longer as impactful as they once were. Today is more of political barriers and cultural barriers that are going to prevent diffusion from occurring. Now with technology and advancements in communication, the physical barriers are no longer as big of an obstacle. Today we reviewed relocation diffusion, expansion diffusion, the different types of expansion diffusion, and also barriers to diffusion. Now you know the drill, it's time for us to practice what we just learned. You can see different questions and examples on the screen right now. What I want you to do is answer those questions try to identify the different types of diffusion. Also, if you want to help with some diffusion, possibly contagious diffusion, making this video go viral, please consider sharing the video or subscribing to the channel. It's just a great way to support the channel and it allows me to make more videos in the future. And if you are struggling with your AP Human Geography class and need a little bit more help, consider checking out my AP Human Geography Ultimate Review Packet. It's got practice quizzes, review videos, and a ton of resources in there to help you get an A in your class and also help you on that national exam in May. All right, that's all the time I have today. Thank you so much for watching the video and tuning in today, geographers. Until next time, I'm Mr. Sin, and I'll see you online.